all of a sudden he just said, I, I want to do this. Seals, it's crazy, you know? It's like the elite of the elite. I said I'd disown him if he joined the military. And don't say that to Mike. Operation Red Wings was a mission to get some, some real bad guys. You, you're creating these images of, you know, if, he, is he, if he's alive now, where is he? Everything about Mike, his whole life led up to that. Not only does that reflect a good leader, it reflects a good person. You treat people the way you want to be treated. Knowing him so much as a child. I regret that I didn't get to spend more time with him as an adult. He led his whole life with honor. I thank him for every day, every second I had with him. Let me miss him. Our kids are going to read about and learn that my cousin is part of history. Mike is just the greatest guy I've ever met in my whole life. He made everybody want to be better. For the protector, that is the audio trailer. And if you have not purchased this uh, full-length documentary, which happens to be up for consideration for Academy Awards on four different occasions, you need to. In the meantime, let me, it's my privilege and American Veterans Radio's privilege to welcome Scott McTavish, who is actually the producer, director, filmmaker, writer, and uh, more importantly, a U.S. Navy veteran. Welcome, Scott, to American Veterans Radio. Hey, Doc, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here among uh, my brother veterans and sister veterans and first responders who are tuning in today. I, I would, I'm going to tell you, and I'll just tell you this up front, my wife and I have the opportunity to uh, watch this not once but twice, and that is the true story of Navy SEAL Lieutenant Michael P. Murphy, Murph the Protector. And i got to tell you, we laughed, cried. We were on the edge of our seat knowing all the above was a true story of a true Navy SEAL hero. I tell you, it's, I have one of the best jobs in the world because I get to tell stories like Michael's. My job really w was easy uh, during the production process because I just had to, I had to engage with Michael's friends and family and teammates, and and they told the story, and, and then I got to put it together. You know, it was a, it's quite an honor for me and my team. We were, uh, quite frankly, were privileged to uh, to tell his story. Now, I noticed, uh, and let me ask you this, I mean, and we uh, were supposed to have Dan Murphy, uh, which was Mike's dad, with us, but watching what you did, it was so fascinating to me for the fact that both Dan and I believe it's a Marine, uh, Mar Marine, I, I, right, right. Yeah, uh, they were just beaming as parents, but then they got a very emotional. Was that kind of what was going on when you were actually filming that? Well, with, with a film like this, uh, like Murph, you know, we, the, the typical uh, quote unquote uh, war movie, uh, close quote, that Hollywood puts out uh, has any, you know, an average of about $50 million. Uh, the average Hollywood documentary can range anywhere from, you know, one to $5 million, depending on who's at the helm. We made Murph for less than $300,000, and a lot of that was through, you know, my personal savings. Uh, a small crowdfunding campaign and some credit cards. Uh, but the point is, uh, we had a very, very short window of time to speak with uh, all of the people in Michael's circle. So we were literally in the room with Dan and Maureen Murphy separately uh, for you know five hours each um, in a very small hotel conference room in Patchogue, New York, where Michael was from. And, of course, we're, I was knee-to-knee -knee with both of them interviewing them. And the room was hot, it was cramped, and you're asking these folks to relive the worst uh, days of their lives and also the best days of their, of their lives with Michael. So, yeah, it was, it was a very difficult uh, series of shoots for us and extremely emotional, not just for myself and for the people that I was talking to, but also the crew people around us. They were very, very emotionally involved. And, and that's exactly how my wife and I experienced that We were... My wife actually looked over me and said, "Jim, are you crying?" And I said, "Yes, I am." That's how <laughs> that's how powerful this is. And you know, being a veteran myself, Michael just he watching your doc documentary, I got to know who Michael was. Not just as a seal, which Lord, let's never forget that. I got to know him from a little kid and all the unselfish things he did until the day 
sadly to say, he was killed in Ashton in Afghanistan. And you brought all that to me, and I want to say you did one hell of a job. Well, I appreciate that, especially coming from a uh, from a vet who is uh, who has vets in his family and, and has uh, committed himself to to uh, honoring those like Michael who've made the ultimate sacrifice. And you know, the thing that struck me about Michael that uh, resonates, you know, he he was called the protector, uh, the ship. The, the nickname of the ship, the USS Michael Murphy, the nickname is the Protector. Uh, but Michael was a very humble guy, and I think he would reject all of this. Uh, he would think all of this was crazy, that people were making such a big deal about him. And that even made him more appealing as, as a character to, uh, to explore on film, uh, because you have this contradiction. You have this extraordinarily courageous guy who not only um, excelled on the battlefield, but was a mentor to kids. Uh, he was a standout at Penn State. He could have gone to any law school that he applied to, yet he was one of the most humble and laid-back guys that, that anyone would ever meet. And I think that's one of the fascinating uh, elements of the, of the film is that he's, he's this contradiction of, of personalities, this, this warrior, yet warrior poet. You know, he's, he's this, um, um, I guess that's the best way to put it. He's, he's, he was humble, and I think that strikes everybody uh, profoundly. Well, and that's exactly the way I took it when I watched it. Now, I actually, our executive producer is from the Long Island, uh, New York area, and she knows exactly the park and everything where Michael was uh, buried. And when I, w- I told her that we were getting ready to do this interview, she was kind of beside herself. So uh, I don't know. Let, let me say this. I mean, I don't know if you've uh, how often you've turned into the radio, tuned into the radio station, but I'm a very uh, crazy kind of guy, but I'm also a very... Uh, passionate kind of guy for the fact that my son done uh, two tours of Iraq and uh, sadly to say he, uh, uh, he, he he's alive but he is uh, never going to be the same I'll just leave it at that and right. with uh, that being said I, I do get very touched and maybe that's where the tears were coming from but I, I want everybody to know the story of Murph the protector Michael P. Murphy he was from what I gathered what you, you told me you told the story you made me proud to be an American. Well, I appreciate that. And, and again, thank you for your service and for that of your son and, and your brother and the others in your, in your periphery. You know, getting back to the uh, Long Island thing, one thing that struck me, number one, you know, we went up and did the interviews. Uh, you know, typically a film like this, you might have a year or more to put it together. But uh, when we decided to pull the trigger and we got Dan Murphy's endorsement to do it, we had about seven months to do it, from stem to stern, all the way through, including the post-production process. So we ran up to Long Island. We did all the interviews. We met all of Michael's friends and family. You know, we were up there for a couple of days. Uh, we had a couple of beers with the guys, and then we were gone. Uh, we didn't see them again until they saw the film. And, and in their minds, we were doing like a PowerPoint presentation. They had they had no frame of reference of what I do as a documentarian. And so afterwards, after the, uh, the, the friends and family screening, I went out to the reception and three of uh, Michael's buddies came up and tackled me and knocked me down, you know, and they were throwing me around like I was a long-lost brother. <laughs> and uh, what struck me about this is that all of Michael's friends and family, or at least the great majority of them, uh, had some form of service, either as their background or as the profession. So, like, those guys that were throwing me around, two of them were first responders. Uh, they're currently cops on Long Island, but they were in, in uh, New York City during 9-11 and lost one of their uncles in the tower. Wow. Michael's father, uh, not only was he a combat-wounded uh, Vietnam vet, but he's also been a, a prosecutor uh, for, for his entire career putting bad guys in jail. Dan Murphy is an extraordinarily bright man. He's very smart. And um, I wish he could have joined us today, but he could have gone on to a big, big firm and made a lot of money, but he decided to serve his community and put bad guys away. Uh, Michael's mom is a teacher. Uh, his Michael's brother is a, is a state trooper for New York. Everyone in his periphery had some sort of uh, service component to them. And that struck me pretty profoundly. That was one of the things that I took away. People say, what did, what did you really enjoy most about it? And I think it was getting to know those folks who lost one of their own but had given so much of themselves in their own lives. And it was it was a really cool experience to meet them. They they came across, Dan and uh, Michael's uh, uh, mom, they came across very, very natural. And that's why I said I you had us hooked 
on uh, this from the time we started watching. We've watched it twice, uh, my, and I cried both times. Sorry, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we we really really did. So everybody who's listening to me, this is Murph the Protector. Uh, you can get that at Walmart. It's also uh, the film that is trending number one on iTunes for documentaries. It is up for four Academy Awards, if my uh, study is correct, right? Uh, correct. Well, we qualified for everything. When, when you go through the process, when you when you make the qualification round, you're then open for everything. But then the, the rounds, it starts getting narrowed down to certain categories where uh, folks start really recognizing uh, certain elements of the film. So we, we qualified for Best Picture and Best Documentary. Uh, but we really started getting momentum with the music, um, which uh, we're, we're up right now for best original song and best original score. And we've gone on in the rounds for that. So that's our most likely. It's still a long shot for us because we're not a Hollywood company. Sure. But those are the two areas that we most likely would win something. And um, uh, I'm sure you were going to touch on this, but you know the... Um, the musicians met, uh, they're, they're friends of mine, they had worked with me on another documentary on a fallen seal that I did. They met at the Naval Academy. They played guitar together as, as young plebes in their freshman year. They went on to, uh, one went on to uh, career as a Navy SEAL officer, the other one went on to uh, career as a pilot. After their military service, uh, they both got into, into music. Jeff Wiedenhofer, who was the pilot, Jeff went on to Broadway and was playing... Uh, uh, many of the very hot Broadway shows. Just a phenomenal guitar player. And then Chris Irwin, who was the uh, the SEAL officer, he lives with his family in the Caribbean, and he he plays around and does a you know guitar singer songwriter thing uh, down there. When they got together on this, they collaborated by Dropbox. So they would one would record a track, uh, Dropbox it up to the other one. The other guy would download, edit, uh, punch it up a little bit, add his vocals or whatever, and then send it back took them about a year to get it done and uh they did it for free they just jocked up and said you know we believe in the cause you know we didn't have any money to pay him a year ago a year ago i was selling camera equipment just to finish the movie nice. um but these guys really hammered it out of the park and i said you know i, I want a sound that has kind of an irish american celtic flavor to it and they just said roger that we got it and i didn't have to talk to them again and what they came up with was absolutely stunning i mean i'm still to this day you know you talk about tearing up after seeing it a couple of times there are points in the film where i still get teared up and i've seen the film over 400 times because i have to you know to edit it sure but the music in it is is amazing and it's available uh on itunes to download you can go to murfmovie.com and have all the information that you need on where the film can be purchased or the bios of the musicians. But there was one other amazing wrinkle that your audience will get. Do Jeff tell. Wiedenhofer, the guitarist, was on temporary assigned duty in 2005 as Keiko officer for Long Island. So Jeff is the Navy officer that actually knocked on the door to deliver the news about Michael being missing. And then he stayed with the Murphys all the way through... Uh, Michael's body being returned, and then the the funeral. Then here he is, uh, you know, seven years later, composing the music that honors Mike uh, in the film. And by the way, guys, uh, when you get, and you're going to go out, I know you are, you're going to go out and uh, buy this great movie, Murph the Protector, you're going to see, because I actually remember him talking about that. He's actually in part of the documentary, and uh, he's him talking about that and how he stayed with the family. Phenomenal. Just absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, you know, you were, the thing about these guys, like when, when Jeff uh, tells his part of the story or when Michael's family and friends tell them, you can tell that the seven years, this, the, the interviews were in 2012. The, the interviews, though, they sound as if it happened two weeks ago. It's, so, it's still so raw and still so uh, tragic to them that when they start talking about it, you can see that they're in that space. And it really, it really is, uh, it's, it's difficult to watch, but it's compelling, and it's, it's incredibly emotional. Scott, we appreciate you so much. Uh, thank you for taking the time out of your day to spend uh, with our uh, worldwide listeners on American Veterans Radio. Where can people, besides Walmart, naturally, and iTunes, uh, can they purchase this from your website? Right now, the uh, the best thing to do to help us out is to go to uh, MurphMovie.com. Yes, you can buy it at retail at Walmart. You can download it on iTunes, uh, Amazon, Google Play, Vudu. It's also on cable carriers on video on demand. 
Um, right now, uh, our surge uh, on iTunes has been so shocking to us that if we can keep that going, it would be great. You know, the, the thing about this movie is that it was such an unlikely film to succeed in the Hollywood space. But here we are, a bunch of vets and, you know, small-time movie guys who are taking on the big Goliath of Hollywood, and we're, and we're winning. So the, the iTunes download would be really huge for us right now. There you go, guys. You heard that. And you know what? You just you just hit on something, Scott, that uh, has been kind of our motto for our going on five years since we started the radio station. If you do the right things for the right reasons, good things happen. And I believe That's that. Bad. I believe that with all my heart. Thank you, uh, Scott McTavish, for staying with us, hanging with us, being here live for our worldwide uh, listeners. And, guys, please go out, purchase Murph the Protector, the true story of Navy SEAL Lieutenant Michael P. Murphy. You will not be sorry, but you may need some uh, tissue. Scott, thank you so much. And, by the way, the song I'm getting ready to uh, leave with is one of the songs that is up. For Academy Award. Here is a Chris Irwin band, uh, Sacrifice. Scott, you have sacrificed. Thank you for your service. God bless you, sir. Hey, Doc, thank you, and God bless to our veterans and to our naval aviators. We just lost another F-18 off the coast of Virginia. Pilot's okay, though. He's, he made it home. God bless. Thank you, sir. Thank you.